Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Miro and today we're gonna be talking about spider that I had to recently go and the reason for that is because he matured into a male and as you guys may know tarantula males they don't live very long. Their main purpose is basically to mate. So I found somebody who is a female up north and I sent that spider up there. During his lifetime I was able to record a bunch of feedings and a rehouse and then packing up and we're gonna start with that but before we get to it let me give you a few updates. So here is an unboxing that I'll probably show you next week. It's a male Hylos DRD, heavy jumping spider. I had two males, I actually have a look at him. I have two pairs, but uh, the both males died. And I don't know why, we just had a recently a really bad three weeks long heat wave. And I don't know if that was it. Here is another unboxing that I may be showing next week. I sent out my Heteropoda Lunula male for loan to Frank Soma. I got a bunch of babies back, not too many, only 13, but I'm still happy that I got those. And besides those, actually, Frank Soma sent me some other cool stuff, like this Green Link Spider from Madagascar, Ilvukasi. These are really, really cool, and they have a lot of colors on them, and these are still kind of young juveniles, so they're only gonna get more colorful and bigger. And he also sent me Netcaster babies. I don't know how many there are, because they were all kind of like clustered together. It could be like around 10, I feel like. That's how tiny they were. So I got those, so I'm hoping that those are gonna do well and I will update you guys on those because they're really, really cool. And here you guys can see my tiger beetles. I think they're starting to lay eggs. So I got some footage of them like chilling together. It was three of them actually sitting together. Lately they've been kind of more, I had feels like more communal and more outgoing. All right, let's start with Psalmopius Victory, Mexican half and half, and we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna start with me packing him up for his shipment up north. So these guys are called Mexican half and half because the front half of their body is black and the rear half of their body is actually kind of reddish and it is probably more visible in females than in the males. When the males get it old, they become basically almost black. They do have some hints of green on the carapace and a little bit of the red, but they are very dark eyes. They come from Mexico, they come from Veracruz, where there is actually rainforest. But here I'm showing you another Psalmopeus that we saw in Costa Rica to just kind of give you an idea where they hide. They hide like mid-ground, mid-height in cavities in trees. Okay, let's start this boxing up time lapse. I had to speed it up a little bit, otherwise, guys, it would be pretty boring. You know, I would be just breaking down enclosure. So, in order for me to get the spider out, I had to remove everything basically that was in my way. And that is basically everything. And as you guys can see, I layered their enclosure with cork barks, some hollow cork barks and branches, and some live plants in order to imitate their natural environment. And as a substrate, I use reptis soil about 2 inches and there is a lot of moss to keep the humidity on a higher level. And here you see he actually ended up hiding behind the only cork bar that I have to leave there because that one is glued to the side and it just helps them with like it's another anchor point for them for their webbing and it makes it look a little bit more natural in my opinion. So I have to get him basically out in an open space in order for me to cup him. And the cup that I'm using is the same one that he's gonna be shipped in, so it's already layered with towels and they are lightly damped, just like a one spray, one little mist. And here I'm just gonna basically put the lid on. Since I'm sending him out for breeding and I recently got some spiders from Frank Soma, I also wanna forward some information that he actually shared with me and that I found very interesting. We were talking a little bit about bloodlines and he told me that when he was breeding his spiders, if he wouldn't refresh the bloodline after about two or three generations, they start getting smaller and they stop producing eggs. So I think that's really interesting because there is a lot of confusing and conflicting information about this on the internet. Because I was already looking into it too because sometimes you have sex mates and you have a male and a female and you want to breed those and you want to know if it's gonna do something so apparently the first generation is not so bad I guess that's in nature because they sometimes don't disperse as far the spiders but if you're gonna continue doing it generation over generations your spiders will get smaller and they will produce less so it's not recommended so it's always good to keep your bloodlines clean here we got first rehouse this was from his juvenile enclosure to his full adult enclosure and I actually 
actually did this one in a butterfly habitat so I actually put both of these enclosures in a butterfly habitat in case he's gonna bolt but he's been such a darling spider he's been so easy going even the packing everything has just been great about him I really hope he can produce it but with that being said who should get a spider like this if you guys are comfortable with fast arboreal spiders then just get it I highly recommend it it's a pretty species it's really cool has a good feeding response but if you guys are not comfortable with fast species maybe start with something like avicularia avicularia uh, and here you can really see the beautiful colors on him that are contrasting with the green moss you can see the blacks and you can see the reds and uh, you know since he ended up being male this is probably the most colorful he's been throughout you know his life because like I said he got a lot darker as a mature male And here you guys can see it. this is a good example of their feeding response. This little guy just got rehoused, but he already went for a cricket. He wasn't waiting. There's a lot of times when tarantulas, when they get rehoused, they get a little stressed out, and it takes them sometimes even months to you know get back in a groove, especially adults. But this guy, nope. Sonopel's Victoria K Mexican half and half is becoming more and more available in the hobby and I've seen some decent price drops too so they're becoming more available and less pricey so that's good. I actually picked up mine from Riverside which is just about like an hour away from where we live in Los Angeles and this is what it looked like when it was a little slim. I already talked a little bit about feeding response so I'm gonna show you some of their feeding videos and you guys can see that I'm keeping them really really humid. This is probably the biggest meal that he's ever got because as you guys gonna see as he got a little bit older and I knew that he's a male I started feeding him smaller meals but I just had a bunch of hornworm caterpillars and you know they just get big so fast so I ended up giving one to this guy and look at him he didn't mind at all. Actually I wish at that time I had a front open enclosure because that picture would be awesome. Awesome. like a really nice contrast with the black and the green and here you guys can see me feeding him banana roach and throughout his life I would feed him anything from those banana roaches to dubia roaches to crickets and also a lot of times I fed him blue bottle flies because blue bottle flies can really hurt your spider they're pretty nutritious and they are also easy for arboreal spiders not just tarantulas but also huntsmen and you guys can see it is in a slow motion because that's why, that's why he took it so slow one thing about the Psalmopius Victoria that I want to say they don't have urticating hair which means they don't kick their hair because a lot of the tarantulas they have hair that they kick at their perceived threads and that hair it's like small like spikes they, it can get stuck in your skin and if you get it in your eyes or throat it's pretty bad but since they don't have it they have a little bit more potent venom so you don't want to get bitten by one of these Not all right guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did hit the like button hit the notification button and subscribe if you like my t-shirt this is spider cafe merchandise and it's a good way to support our channel this is basically Fight Club, but instead of the actors, we have spiders in them. And it says Spider Cafe, not Fight Club. Much cooler, huh? Alright, thank you so much. And if you like today's music, it was Baseman character from Germany. Really cool punk band. And also our dear primo from Valencia, T-Bros. I'll see you next week. Ciao.